Well, Merle didn't make it back, so I'll read Scripture to you, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So these are our Scriptures for VBS this week, just so you know. The theme is what, Kim? Um, Digging for for the truth. And it's about treasure. What do you treasure? In the movie, since uh, Barry brought that up, the boy was brought up in church and everything, and I won't give any spoiler alerts, but the girl that he liked, you know, girls can make you do crazy things, had a band, and it had Galatians, and he was familiar enough with it, and he said, 2020? And she's like, oh, so you're crystal clear on what that means? But a lot of Christians aren't, are they? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. A lot of Christians don't realize that, I don't think, that we're a new creation in Christ, that the old things that you used to think were treasures, they really aren't anymore, that the treasure is knowing Jesus, and that's what we want to try to get portrayed to the children this week, to the workers this week, to their families this week. So I do ask you to devote yourselves to praying and or helping if you can. Because Satan is already attacking. Like I said, Sherry's homesick. Polly's blood pressure is over 200. Satan is working. He doesn't want us to teach our children. But let's knock him out of here, okay? Our scripture. Luke 12, 33 to 34 is our theme verse. Your treasure in heaven will never never fail. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So this sets the theme. Tuesday's verse is Matthew 13, 44. And Kim, I took the Children's International Bible, is what I'll be quoting from, just so you know if you want to put it up there. And it reads this way. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. One day a man found the treasure, and then he hid it in the field again. The man was very happy to find the treasure. He went and sold everything that he owned to buy that field. Wednesday's verse, Matthew 6, 21. Your heart will be where your treasure is. And Thursday's verse, Matthew 19, 21. If you want to be perfect, then go and sell all the things you own. Give the money to the poor. If you do this, you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. So let's pray and then we'll get started in the message. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you that you are a wonderful, mighty God, faithful and true, loving and kind. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to be your holy people, set apart from the world, to have the privilege of telling the good news of Jesus Christ, of him crucified, of him giving up his life for for our sins, the the penalty of our sins, and for not offering us, but, but sending the Holy Spirit to equip us for this new life that we have in Christ, a life where we treasure things differently than we used to treasure things, a life where we live differently than the way we used to. A life where we live, love the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love others as we love ourselves, even as Christ loved and gave Himself up. We just thank you and praise you for all of your wonderful, mighty deeds. And we pray for VBS this week that you will work mightily in the lives of the children and the parents as well. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I told you it was digging for the truth. That's what I named this sermon. And we went over the scriptures. So we're going to look at Luke 12 first. Your treasure in heaven will never fail, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Kim shortened it down a little bit so that it was easy for them to, re- to remember that. So let's look at Acts 2 first and tie it in since we've been talking there. In Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came in power. The promise that Jesus told His disciples that it was better for Him to leave so that the Holy Spirit would come. That you see Jesus when He gets into the upper room and has the uh, Last Supper with them and washes their feet and everything, then He gives them these instructions. And you keep reading about love, that you are to love. And you keep reading about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit coming, this gift that was promised in the Old Testament to all who would believe this, this person, the deity of, of God, the, the Trinity, that would dwell in you and lead you into all truth, sanctify you tr- through and through, never leave you, never forsake you, uh, be a foretaste of what is to come. 
Then we get to Acts chapter 2 in, the Pen in Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, where the uh, people from all different tribes and tongues are gathered together and the Holy Spirit comes. Starting in verse 1 of Acts chapter 2, when the P day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. A gift that Peter goes on to preach about that is for you and your children and your children's children. A gift for you from God Himself, not just to seal you, but so that you can live a life as a witness, even a martyr, because the word can be translated that way also, for Jesus Christ and the love that God has for you. Dropping down to verse 36 then, Peter finishes his sermon this way, which is really the Holy Spirit sermon through Peter. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. The devil has no victory. <laughs> the devil thought that this would be the best thing ever, that he could kill the Son of God. But Jesus gave up his life willingly so that he could defeat the power of death and Satan's power in your life. He has no dominion, no power. Jesus said that He gives you His peace, His joy, something totally different than you'll ever find in treasures of this earth. Verse 37, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Did you do something? And our scripture comes, one of our scriptures, some of our scriptures come from that, that we do something as a result. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, your children, all who are far off, for all who the Lord, the Lord our God will call. He's already given uh, prophecy from Joel and from David, and he's already quoted the prophecy from Joel that this gift was for everyone, sons, daughters, everyone, not just a select few. With many other words, verse 40, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So what did they need to do? They needed to repent. They needed to change their minds so it would change their hearts, so they would change the direction that they were going. And instead of chasing after the world's treasures, they would chase after treasures in heaven because they are new children of the Most High, born again by the Spirit of God. And then what do they need to do? He kept pleading with them, begging them. As Paul says in some of your translations, I beseech you there. He begs by the mercies of God that you do what? You save yourselves from this corrupt generation. How can you save yourself if you blend in with them? You've got to be different, set apart. You've got to let your light shine before men that they see your good works and glorify Father which is in heaven. You've got to be hopeful, be joyful, have peace so that the world sees it. And then when they see that, they might ask you why you have this joy, this peace, this hope. Who is this Jesus? And then you get an opportunity to tell them. Verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 were added to, the num to their number that day. So what did the kingdom of heaven look like on earth? We've talked about kings and kings and dominions and how you serve a king or a kingdom and you will serve one king or the other. It's either Jesus or it's the devil. That's what Jesus says. There's no gray area here. You're either with him or you're against him. You're either gathering for the kingdom or you're scattering. So which kingdom have you given your allegiance to? The kingdom of heaven is here. John the Baptist said it. Jesus said it. So repent. Turn to God, live for King Jesus. So what did the church look like? Verse 42, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. This is not in Scripture, I'm adding this. Then as a result of them devoting themselves to this, th these things, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. The people that believed in God already were in awe of God because the Spirit was working through the apostles. Because 
They devoted themselves, not just listened to, one in one ear and out the other. They hear, they hear it and obey. The words of God, the apostles' teaching, to fellowship means I have a relationship with you. You have a relationship with me. And it's the kind of relationship that we have because we have fellowship with God himself through what Jesus Christ has done in his spirit living with us. It's not, it's not a casual word. It's a lifestyle where I think of others before I think of myself because that's exactly what Jesus did for me. It's the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. Verse 44, all the believers were together. They had everything in common because they didn't consider the treasures of this earth anything except something to share, something that God had blessed them with so that they could bless others. They even, verse 45, sold property and possessions to give to anyone who has need. Now, I'm going to go against some commentaries here and stuff, and i tell you whenever I do that. Who is this anyone who has need? Because so many commentaries will tell you it's the brethren. I don't believe that way. I'll say it again. I don't believe that way. I believe it's even your enemies. Because I read Jesus' words, and that's what we need to go back to, and I see what he says. Sure, I will love this family and give to this family. And sure, there needs to be some guidelines on how we, we, we live for the world, but we don't want to shut them out of the kingdom. We have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So I want you to look at that day from that perspective. You don't have to go along with me or not, but who is this anyone? Is it only fellow believers? As some uh, commentators say, it was only for that time period because there was persecution. There's persecution every day. There's temptations every day. And some say it was because of the, the warning of coming destruction. They didn't know when that would come, so they lived differently. They lived differently because the Spirit of God lived in them. So they finally understand what Jesus summed up when he was asked, and we shouldn't ask him testing him. We should ask him wanting to know as children, what is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with everything. I know I'm summarizing it. And because you do, you can't help but love your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor? If you want to qualify it that way as a man did, it was the evil Samaritan to him. That was definitely his enemy if anybody was. And as Jesus goes on to tell that story, the priest walked by his fellow Jew, the Levite walked by his fellow Jew, but the Samaritan did not because he had compassion. So even though he did not know true love, true worship of the Spirit, he knew enough in his heart to know what compassion was for somebody. When the people of the church, the priest and the Levite, didn't understand it. They knew Jesus' words, but they weren't written on his heart, on their heart. Love the Lord your God with everything and love your neighbor, which Jesus qualified as an enemy even. So to answer these questions, we're going to look at some of the scriptures that, ironically, that we have for our VBS. Verse 46, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Because people didn't consider the things they owned to be theirs to keep for their own treasures. They thought to themselves, oh, I remember Jesus' words. Don't store up treasures here on earth. That's one of our verses we're getting to. But instead, build up treasures in heaven. And you do that by loving, and you'll see from Scripture, you get, do that also by selling the things you have and giving away so they don't have the strings pulling, tugging on your heart anymore. That they just don't matter. You literally could sell everything, give it to the poor, and go follow Jesus then. Because these things aren't holding you back anymore. Paul said to strip away anything that hinders you or ties you down. Because you're running a race. So just as an athlete does that's competing for a crown, run it with everything you've got. Because the crown that you're running for is imperishable. In John 13, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. He tells them about the new covenant that is written in his blood. He breaks bread and teaches them what fellowship is like. That the Holy Spirit is coming. And they will be known by the way they love one another. Brethren, yes. But even enemies, yes. So if we look at that, and then they went out after, the, after these teachings, and they went out to do what together? Pray, because persecution was coming. 
As we read on in Acts chapter 2, you're going to see some exact similar events. You're going to see that Peter doesn't have money, but he gives this beggar what he does have, <laughs> a gift that the Holy Spirit's given him to heal him. We then see hypocrisy in the church with Ananias and Sapphira, and we see persecution coming. Just like after this night, that persecution came to Jesus so that you wouldn't be persecuted for all eternity. So what's a little suffering in this world? What's a little giving up in this world? Jesus gave up heaven. He says, if you want to follow me, I don't have a place to lay my head. So it's not just his teachings, it's how he lived also. And he definitely loved everyone. Do you believe that we should live like Acts 2.42? Do you believe you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself? How about this? Are you devoted to that? That's a big difference, isn't it? <laughs> Are you devoted to it? That nothing else matters, that if it costs you your job like Tim Tebow, right? That you will. That's a lot of money, a lot of fame. In John 13... 34, we read this teaching of Jesus. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. We were all enemies when Christ died for us. So you must love one another. You must do this. By this, when you do this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And if we do that, which is what Jesus said we must do, then aren't we drawing people to the kingdom instead of scattering them? <laughs> Vacation Bible School, I'll say it again. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What time, 1230? Yeah, 1230 to 4. 1230 to 4. Maybe you don't have it in your schedule. But maybe you can stop and pray that time. Maybe you can pray before. Maybe you can pray afterwards. Maybe you can continue to pray after VBS is over. Some of these children will have been read the Bible plenty of times. Some of these will be new to them. We want that to permeate their thinking that Jesus is the treasure. The things of this world, because the world is constantly against it all the time in everything you see and hear. So we need to be combating Satan's lies. And we surely can do it with prayer because that's the pattern that Jesus had. That's the pattern that the church had. They were devoted to this, to teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Digging for the truth. Your treasure in heaven will never fail. Other things may fail. I'm going to try to ride a tricycle in here. We'll see how it works. That's what I'll do on day one because that's what a treasure. But on day two, my tricycle's broken. My dreams are crushed. On day three, I'm going to sell my tricycle and follow Jesus. You need a little thing. Because with our theme and with these things that they see, we're going to be praying that God impresses on their heart what true treasure is. Because even many Christians live for treasure in this world and miss out on building treasures in heaven. Here's how it reads from... I don't remember if this is Children's International Bible or if this is NIV, but this is a legitimate Bible translation. <laughs> Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Did you know that was in there first? <laughs> Provide for yourselves with purses that don't wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Isn't that amazing? That scripture right there is exactly what Acts chapter 2 church did. They sold everything so nothing would be in the way. So many times we look at that scripture and say, is he really asking me to sell everything? No. <laughs> Jesus is not asking you to sell everything. But he's demanding that you have to give him your allegiance and love, number one, nothing else. He will be what divides father from son, daughter from mother, over your faith. But even if you're divided, if they see the difference that God has made in your life, then you're planting seed. And that's what you're called to do. The Holy Spirit will be what makes that grow. But if you're not planting seed, if you're not doing that, 
And the seeds aren't planted, are they? Hopefully God plants them through someone else, but He wanted to plant them through you. What greater heritage do we have than our children and our grandchildren? So I think that was Barry and Study Bible, but I'm not sure. Because the International Children's Bible is the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. One day a man found the treasure. No, I'm in Matthew now, sorry. This is our verses for each day. That was the theme verse. Sorry. So close, it's verse 44. Tuesday's verse from the Children's International Bible, Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like, there we go, Jesus says it. Listen up. You want to know? You're, you're interested in heavenly things? The kingdom of heaven is like this. A treasure hidden in a field. One day a man, man found the treasure. Then he hid it in the field again. The man was very happy to find the treasure. He went and sold everything that he owned to buy that field. There we have it again. He sold all of his possessions to get this treasure. It's three times already. Matthew 6, 21. Your, treasure, your heart will be where, where your treasure is. Matthew 19, 21. Do you know that story? Well, you know what Matthew 6 is. Let's don't leave that yet. That's, that's the Sermon on the Mount, right? Yeah. And we'll, Jesus teaches us to pray and everything else, and He teaches us in there, in that beginning of Matthew chapter 6, to give to the needy. That's how He starts that. They don't worry about the things, and He tells us in that sermon too, not to worry about the, what we wear, what we uh, eat, or anything else. And our Heavenly Father longs to give us that. And then in Matthew 19, which we see in other, chapter, or other Gospels as well, we have that rich man that has everything, right? But his heart isn't focused on Jesus. Matthew 19, 21, our last Bible verse for the week, is if you want to be perfect, then go and sell all the things you own. That's the fourth time we read that. Give the money to the poor. If you do this, you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Four times, that must be a coincidence, right? Three of them were Jesus told us to do it. The first one, or fourth one, depending on which way you're counting, was when the Holy Spirit came on the first believers and they said, Peter! And all the other apostles, what must we do? Repent. Have an outward expression of your faith by being baptized. That you know, and they knew what that meant, because this was the same thing circumcision meant, but not near as hard. Outward sign that you really believe what you have, and then go prove it by the way you live your life. And they did. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship the breaking of bread, praying, and they sold everything they had because they didn't consider it their, their own. As a result, there were no needy among them, and the Spirit moved among them powerfully. And there were many wonders and signs, and they were in awe of what God was doing in the church. Not about you, but that would be wonderful. So I ask again, you know what the greatest command is? You know what our commission is? You know what the second greatest command is? Are you devoted to it? There's a big difference between just knowing it and shedding off anything that hinders you or so easily entangles you and run the race to win. To win for Jesus. So some of the questions I'm going to ask the kids is what is truth? And we're going to find that in God's Word. What is treasure? We're going to find that in God's Word. But here's the last question again. What is the treasures that your heart desires? It's the same question for the kids that it boils down to us. <laughs> what are you chasing after? What do you live for? What can't you live without if you put it the way that Jesus said to that young rich man? Because he had everything else. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe with the wonders and signs performed by the apostles. They lived a new lifestyle. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. I think that means even enemies. 
Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And we talked about that. They were fearful to even go outside before to profess, profess their faith. Now they're doing it boldly in the temple courts. But as I told you, persecution is going to come and you'll see them pray for boldness to preach the gospel rather than the persecution being taken away. That one always blows my mind. Because, I mean, naturally I want to pray for the persecution to be taken away also. I want boldness, but take it away, Lord. But he may or may not. They broke their bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. In Luke chapter 12, 13, our um, chapter after our theme verse, if you read on there, and that theme verse was your treasure in heaven will never fail, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. At the beginning of chapter 13 and verse 3, Jesus has to answer his disciples because they ask him, hey, do these bad things happen to these people because they're bad? And Jesus says, no, they just happened. And twice he tells them the exact same thing, verse 3 and verse 5. No, I tell you, very, ver verily, verily, truly, truly, you better listen up. If you have ears to hear, hear, but unless you repent, you will also perish. Might not be in this world, but you will perish for all eternity. Verse 5, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will also perish. <coughs> Which is exactly what Peter told them again at Pentecost. But if you keep reading on in Luke 3, the very next thing that Jesus tells us is about a fig tree that doesn't produce. Coincidence again? Or is this because, listen up, if you don't repent and turn to God and chase after true treasure, you're going to die eternally. What good is a fig tree that does not produce figs? Pretty simple. A child can get that through their head, right? It's not very good for a fig tree, is it? It doesn't provide the food that it was designed to, prov to provide. Are you a child of the kingdom of heaven? <clears throat> Luke goes on to talk some more in parables. There's also a healing of a woman, random woman, not necessarily a brethren. Uh, and you'll see money brought in again. There's a parable of the kingdom of heaven, mustard seed, just like we read from Mark chapter 4 last week, and leaven of the church instead of leaven of the Pharisees, which Jesus warned them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, because they know the law, but don't do it. They don't do it because their hearts are far from me. Their hearts are focused on other treasures. And then sandwiched right between that is we have our verses, your treasure in heaven will never fail. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So the culmination of our VBS and where we're looking at today is where is your heart focused? I know there are many things that compete I know there are distractions, there are things you can't avoid, but in every one of those circumstances, there's a chance to use everything for the kingdom of God one way or the other. Marianne, I loved your prayer request, and I know it hurts, but you're praying for God's will. Because you don't know the big plan, the big scheme. He does. Kind of how the movie was Friday. I don't even think it should have ended the way it ended, because <laughs> it wasn't even necessary but it was still there. And I guess it was there because, hey, will you be faithful and true and trust God no matter what? Will you? It needs to be our mission to be a witness for Jesus, to spread the gospel message instead of building up treasures in heaven. Two brothers worried about money. And they came to Jesus and said, we want our Father's inheritance. They were focused more on the things on this earth. And in verse 15, Jesus said to them, Watch out. Guard yourselves against every form of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he tells them this parable of a rich man. Now this is back in Luke 12, our theme verse. You know who that rich man was? Different one from the one that came up and said, I must, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
This was the one who said, I got bigger gardens. You sowed seed for me, and I got an abundance. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to build bigger barns for myself. He missed the point, didn't he? Could have been maybe, just maybe, that God gave him those full barns so that he could be rich to others. It's what the scripture implies. But he wasn't. And that very day, God required his life of him. Because Jesus has clearly taught us, don't worry about the things of this world. Don't worry about what people can do to you. Fear God who has authority to throw your body and your soul in hell. He's the one we should be living for, if anything, just out of heavenly fear. But we don't have to because Scripture also says that love casts out all fear. Perfect love does. And that's talking about loving your neighbor again. Bible verses each day. Matthew 13, 44, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field. One day a man found the treasure, and then he hid it in the field again. The man was very happy to find the treasure. He went and sold everything that he owned to buy that field. Matthew 6, 21, With all the teaching of Jesus, your heart will be where your treasure is. Matthew 19, 21, If you want to be perfect, if you study the word here, it means complete. Lacking nothing. That you get what the Jesus means by the kingdom of heaven. You've obeyed the law. You've done everything else. You've got every treasure even that the world could offer you. But if you want to be complete, lacking nothing, when it comes to the whole scheme of everything, then go sell all the things that you own. Every one of them. Do what with them? Give the money to the poor. If you do this, you will have treasure in heaven. Selling that tricycle for treasures in heaven? No brainer. Even a little child can see that. Even if that is the most treasured possession that they have. Do you see that? If you want to be complete from the mouth of Jesus... The Word became flesh and dwelling among us. Then don't let anything keep you from loving the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and loving your neighbor as much as you love yourself, even as Christ loved. No greater love does a man have but to lay down his life, to give it up, to save someone else. Thing is, is, you have to decide if you're going to do it or not, right? What happened with that man? He walked away that day sad. I don't know why sad's used. <laughs> he walked away, maybe he didn't realize, but he walked away from Jesus and the question he asked that day, eternal life. Now maybe he figures it out, but that day, if he died that day, he'd be just like the rich fool that God required his life that day. We don't know if we'll have tomorrow or not. So today is today to proclaim the Lord's favor. And we get a chance this week to do VBS here. Why? Because no other church wants to do it right now. Don't, don't quote my words on that. Because of COVID and other reasons. And we said, bring it here. Okay? And the devil's already working. We found out just last week we didn't have song team. And Barb and Sherry said, we'll do it. Here I am, Lord, send me. And now Sherry can't even hardly speak. Polly said last week, I'll help. Now she's got blood pressure over 200. We fight a spiritual battle. But Satan has no power, no dominion in our life. And the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much, don't they? So we're going to pray some today. If you will, with me, devote yourself to this teaching... It's not my teaching, is Jesus's. I'm not saying I'm an apostle either. Don't put words in my mouth there. I'm saying I'm called to God, by God to shepherd this church. And that's what I'm trying to do, by preaching the word of God. And if you ever disagree with me, come talk to me. If you ever see me not preaching the word of God, because we might disagree a little bit, then you definitely come to me and you bring it to someone else. You bring it to the church if you need to. Because I don't need to be up here doing anything but preaching the word of God to you. 
So if you devote yourself to that teaching and the fellowship, and we got a new coffee pot back there, so we got even more time to fellowship. You don't have to have the one that I had last week. That was my mistake. It takes like four minutes to do a cup. This one will do it in about 45 seconds. Okay? So I'll show you how to use it. Breaking of bread. So we're going to have communion. And if you haven't had communion with us, everyone is welcome to the Lord's table. Isn't that cool? <laughs> everyone. Even God's enemies, which we all were, so don't think more highly than you ought to of yourself. Everyone is welcome, and I've got little pre-made cups if you want that. And, of course, you don't have to take. It's up to you if you take. And Paul warns us about taking it in an improper manner. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, what I have done for you, that I gave up heaven to come to live here, to give up my life so that you could have eternal life, and so you would pledge your allegiance to me now and live what you couldn't live before because I'm going to come and live inside of you and greater things that you'll even do. And I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Wow. So that night, he said, this is a new covenant written in my blood. Nothing can break this covenant. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. And then after that, we're going to spend some time in prayer. It can be awkward and silent if you want it to be, or you can pray out loud. And I'll close us when that time of prayer is over. So we're going to do communion. I'll start in a second. And then we're going to go. Anyone can pray, quietly or not. And then when I feel like time is, I will close us in prayer. And Debbie, you close us out. Got it? So that night... <laughs> Even with making sure because my nose is runny because I about cried rather than cold. And this one I'll put aside. I washed my hands before I did all the other and have blessed it. That night, Jesus had fellowship with those closest to him. And yet there was still one in their midst that would betray Jesus for all eternity. There was another one in their midst that Jesus points out that would deny him utterly, Peter. <laughs> but yet, Jesus would still use him. And he wants to use each and every one of us to draw our children and our grandchildren, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our neighbors, and even our, our enemies to the cross where they can find true treasure, true peace. So he said... Do this in remembrance of me. And he ate it. And then he took the wine cup and he said, This is my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm setting this one aside. These are already broken. And these are pre-done, if you'd rather. And this is exactly what the church did. They devoted themselves to Jesus' teaching. They remembered what He had done for them. They gathered together daily so that they could find out, be equipped more to pray I just imagine when they're gathered in the upper room, when the, when the Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit came, not Pentecost came, Holy Spirit came, it was on the day of Pentecost, that they were praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us not chase after treasures of this world. Forgive us of our debts, debts, trespasses, whichever word you want to use as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know the temptation here is not what most people think. It's not the temptation of trials and tribulations. It's the temptations of what tempts the world. What does tempt the world? Power, money, greed, earthly treasures. 
We don't want to be tempted by them so that we can build up treasures in heaven and live for King Jesus. As you come, you make sure that you're right, whether you've devoted yourself or what it is. You do this in remembrance of Jesus and what He's done for you. And then let's pray for VBS. Pray for those that are sick already. Pray for those that are coming. Pray for their families, whatever God leads you to pray. Because we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So come to His table. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for what Jesus has done. We thank you that he gave up his life to save us. Lord, may we remember so that it spurs us to action. May we realize that the Holy Spirit lives in us. May we realize that Jesus is preparing a place for us and he's given us the authority and the power to live for him until he returns to claim us as his very own. Lord, bless this bread and bless this juice, Lord, as we remember Jesus' body given for us and His blood poured out for us. We do this in Jesus' name. Amen.